we're at a client's building today uh, to rectify a small problem we've been having. Uh, this client has been with us for over 20 years. We installed these systems in 1999 and we have three outdoor air-cooled condensing units. Each condensing unit has two separate cooling systems in them. These are 25 ton condensing units. Each one has a 12 and a half ton air handler inside the building. Uh, two separate refrigeration circuits in each unit. One separate compressor on each. And we've been having a little bit of an issue with these having nuisance trip outs on oil pressure safety on the compressors. Uh, we've noticed a little bit of foaming going on in the oil pressure and we've uh, checked the oil pressures and the superheats on the system and found that the superheat is a little bit low and that's causing liquid refrigerant in the oil and foaming of the oil which can be interfering with our oil pressures at times so we're adjusting all of them and we're going to take you inside and up on a lift and show you how we do that I'm going to take the ride on the lift and then we'll show you what we're doing up in the air on this air handler for our, the unit we're currently working on. Each air handler has two thermostatic expansion valves. We're going to make adjustments to these. The thermostatic expansion valve controls the superheat, which is basically the difference from the point that the liquid refrigerant turned into vapor and the amount of heat has picked up since so that we know that we're not trying to pump liquid with those compressors. We've hooked up some Testo smart probes checking our suction pressures and our suction temperatures and then we're going to use a tablet hooked up to these Bluetooth to show the superheats. We're going to close the door back up because we can't get an effective reading with the doors off. And we make uh, adjustments slowly because with a thermostatic expansion valve, the changes happen slowly. The bulb on the TXV, the sensing bulb, has to react to the change in temperature of the suction line and then uh, it, it needs time to stabilize out. So we make adjustments slowly as we go. We're checking one system at a time, and our tablet shows us the low pressure indicated by our pressure sensor. It shows us the evaporator temperature that relates to that pressure. It shows us the actual temperature that our temperature smart probe is reading, and then we get a readout of the superheat here. So we'll make small adjustments at a time to the spring pressure on the TXVs. After 21 years of operation, it's possible that the springs have lost a little bit of tension. Perhaps the diaphragms are uh, getting a little worn where the rods contact them. And uh, it's resulting in a little lower superheat than we want to see. But uh, this one seems to be going up and down between about 15 and 20 degrees, which we're good with that. Thermostatic expansion valves will hunt up and down slightly uh, depending on the load and that's all in the design by the manufacturer of the size of the TXV for the system and the orifice size that's in the nozzle uh, distributor on the TXV. Uh, they're never 100% steady state so we just make sure we're operating up and down within an acceptable range. And uh, that's a little bit about adjusting thermostatic expansion valves.